Professor Deborah Perso talked about the cases of four children who have been off HIV treatment for around a year. I spoke to her to find out more. Can you tell me about the journey from the case report in 2013 to where we are today? I mean, so what we presented on today was really our trying to replicate the case of the Mississippi baby we reported in 2013. Essentially, that was a child um, who we identified as having artery remission. What artery remission means is that an individual who is living with HIV, taking their antiretroviral drugs, which we know someone needs to take for the rest of their lives, if they, that person goes off therapy, that the virus would not rebound right away, usually within two to four weeks. In the Mississippi baby, that child went for 27 months, over two years, with no virus detected in the circulation. And so it was our sentinel case of our free remission. Today we reported on the findings from that study where we treated 54 infants who were born with HIV infection. We treated them within 48 hours of life, followed them for years, this group of uh, children had reached about five and a half years of age. There were six of them who had maintained very good virologic suppression and so met our criteria to stop their antiretroviral treatment to see if they, we had achieved remission. There were six children who stopped their treatment and how long did some of them stay without HIV? So the six children, I want to emphasize when we say stop treatment, this should not be done in any clinical care setting. This is part of a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. And so six children did stop, and we monitor them frequently to see when the virus would come back. For the clinical trials, the outcome was how many children could go for 48 weeks, so almost a year without the virus coming back. And what we found is four out of the six children met that benchmark or timeline of 48 weeks or more off antiretroviral drugs without the virus coming back. One child, went up to 80 weeks, but the virus did come back. But 80 weeks is 20 months. Is viral rebound a concern even after an extended period of remission? Yeah, so viral rebound is always a concern. You know, we're always afraid of reseeding the viral reservoirs that we worked so hard to, to reduce. One observation in this study that was we thought was unexpected was that two of the three children developed acute retroviral syndrome with the viral rebound. And that's something we don't commonly see in children. So we've modified our protocol to really pay close attention, looking very carefully for signs of acute retroviral syndrome. And for people who don't know, could you explain Yeah, a bit? so yeah. It, it, it is like having a cold, a fever, so, or the flu, fever and sore throat and a rash. It's very common in adults during acute infection, but not commonly seen in children. And in fact, in these two children, the parents thought they just had a cold when they developed the fever and flu-like symptoms. But it was a sign of the virus coming back in these two children. This was a proof of concept, yeah. and it, the numbers were still quite limited. Um, are you working on other studies where you're trying similar strategies with large groups of infants? Yes, so I just want to emphasize the numbers are really not that small. You know, we went from an N of one to an N of four. Um, there are newer strategies that we already have implemented um, using more potent drugs, so integrase inhibitors, because they block the virus from integrating into your genetic material. We're combining these antiretroviral drugs with broadly neutralizing antibodies. These are antivirals, but they're also what we call immunotherapeutics. And so the study is continuing to advance to use more potent regimens to get more kids suppressed, mm -hmm. because you need to get the suppression before we can think about remission and cure. And is immediate ART for infants a practical strategy? That's a terrific question. It is a practical strategy because right now we have ways, point of care tests with very quick turnaround time. But what it requires is having access to those point of care tests. So we need to really try to push for implementation of access to point of care testing so babies can be identified and treated very early.